Before I go ahead and discuss the details of the viscous flowing pipe, I'd like to first talk about why this is important. Okay? And if you think about it, currently in the building that we're in, when we open the faucet, we have water coming to us. right? So the reason is that we have a piping system, a complex piping system in the buildings, and we need to design them appropriately. Okay? And the goal of this in the several few segments, I will focus on these design. Okay? But before I go ahead and find these design parameters and what should be the diameter of the pipe in my buildings, we need to talk about a few things. Okay? And also I gave an example of the building, but you can also think about a much more important design, and that is in our body. Okay? In our, inside of our body, we have arteries, we have vessels, and these are piping systems. Okay? We have a pump that is connected to these pumping systems called arteries and vessels, and the name of that is heart. So we are all very familiar with this system as well. Okay? I want to introduce you a few concepts. Okay? The first concept that many of you may know already is this concept of laminar flow, turbulent flow. Okay? So the first scientist who discovered this is Oswald Reynolds, and what he did was he put some streaks to the flow, and he observed how it travels as a function of the velocity and time, right? So basically, you can put a food die into the, you can drop it uh, at a constant interval to the flow, and when you do it for the laminar flow, you will see, let's say that I'm taking this point as the official point, I will just go like this, okay? And if I assign this to be the direction, let's say x, what will happen is this velocity will only be a function of x. You can see that the velocity in here is not going up, right? It's not going down, it's not going into the page, it's not coming out of the screen, right? So that means that it's only a function of the x direction. So this is 1D, right? So this will give me significant advantages from the mathematics stand of view, okay? But then we can play with few parameters, but today I'm going to only focus on the velocity. Let's say that I increase the velocity in my pipe. What will start to happen over here is you will see that I'm starting to get some kind of perturbations like this in my flow, okay? Now the velocity, again the same x direction, is not simply a function of x, okay? If I have, let's say that this is polar coordinates, it now will have some velocity in the r direction and may have some velocity in the theta direction as well, right? So I'm seeing some circulation happening in my flow, although it's not an extensive amount of circulation, okay? Yet, on the other hand, if I continue my experiment by increasing my velocity further and further, at some point what will happen is you will see that this is going to get fairly uh, complicated flow profile like this. Okay? And this is called turbulent. Okay? Most of you are familiar with turbulent from real life applications. One of the examples that is very commonly known is the snoring. Okay? What happens is your air passages get smaller because of the conservation of mass, my velocity increases, and what happens is I obtain a turbulent flow, and you can see that noise, a characteristic snoring noise, okay? So let's try to quantify this. This was, as you noticed up to now, this was a qualitative measurement. Let's quantify it. As I mentioned, Reynolds uh, find out about this, and what we have is we have density, velocity, some kind of characteristic length for a pipe, it will be the diameter. If it's not a pipe, it will be hydraulic diameter. We'll discuss that. Uh, divided by the viscosity. And also, this sometimes is appropriated by the kinematic viscosity as well. And these are the concepts that we have covered in our videos as well. Okay? And one thing to note that you may remember this from the other concepts where we were covering the pi terms. I discussed important non-dimensional fluid parameters, or numbers, and this was one of them. So this Reynolds number is a non-dimensional number. And what is commonly said is that when Reynolds number is, let's say, less than 2000, okay, or some people call it 200 to 200, so it really depends on the source, okay, I'll talk a little bit more about it. We call this laminar, okay, and if we have my Reynolds number between 2000 and 2500. Some people go up to all the way to 10,000 as well. Okay, so this is called the transitional. And then when my Reynolds number is about 2500 for sure, 
then I'm going to get myself some turbulent flow. Okay. So now let's talk about this for a minute. So let's look at these. One thing I usually hear from students is, is this like 2000? What happens is 1999 versus 2001? Well, this is not like a digital signal. Well, this is just one and zero. This is more like an analog. Okay. So this is just an approximation. What I mean by saying that, hey, if my Reynolds number is lower than 2000, then effect of the turbulence will be minimal in my flow. Right. So that's basically what it means. So I'm not going to need to account for turbulent effects when my Reynolds number is lower than 2000. Now I'm going to talk about something called entrance region and fully developed flow. So this will be very important for me. Okay, you'll see what I mean by that. The question here is this. I have again the same constant diameter pipe, right? And what I mentioned previously is in a closed channel, I typically have flow generated by the existence of a pump, right? I connect the pump. In our bodies, it's the heart. In a building, it's the pump, right? So my question is, let's say that right over here, I attach a pump. So what will happen to velocity profile immediately, right? Let's say over here versus here versus here versus here, right? So that's what I'm trying to assess in this segment. And what I want to say is experiments have been done and we demonstrated there's some kind, something called a boundary layer that has been formed, okay? This is symmetric and they will converge over here, okay? What we have noticed is we have something called in visit core over here, okay? And the rest over here is called the viscous flow, okay? Let's take a, a cross-section right over here, okay? And as you see here, um, in this region, it's supposed to be inviscid, okay? But before going that, let me explain how the velocity profiles are different in inviscid and viscous. In inviscid, it is uniform, okay? It's like this. The velocity will be uniform in the inviscid flow. And we have covered this in control volume principles, right? We have demonstrated that. But if I have a viscous flow, it will be completely different. Now I'm going to have a parabolic velocity profile, okay? And this is actually the most of the flows in, in our real life will be in this manner, the viscous flow type, okay? It has a parabola and we'll make derivations of the shape, what is the peak over here, etc. We'll do the... So having known that, now I'm going to go back and let's say that this is the... Right over here is the inviscid, right? So my velocity is going to look like this over here, right? right and this is uniform basically one constant velocity but then let's look at this region it says that it's supposed to be viscous right look it says all these regions are viscous now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a parabolic velocity profile then right like this note that I have a parabolic velocity profile at the outer sections and this is within the boundary layer right and I get this type of shape. This is fairly complicated if you think about it in my analysis. But the good thing is once this converges, the boundary layer converges, the velocity profile is going to look like a proper parabola. Okay? So this will be a little bit more easier for me to analyze. Okay? And we have in this region from right where the flow starts, to where these two boundary layers converge, we call this the entrance region. Entrance region, that's the title of this particular segment. And this is called fully developed flow. Okay? When I analyze the fluid develop, it will be much easier. And I actually have a length for the entrance region. So if I go from here to here, I'm going to call L sub E. L sub B. E. L is the length, E is the entrance, right? And this has actually, we have quantified what this LE is, is as well. So I have LE, so this is non-dimensional, diameter is the diameter of the pipe. If I'm having a, a laminar flow, I will get myself 0 0.06 of the Reynolds number for laminar flow. And if I have myself a turbulence flow, now it's going to be 4.4. Reynolds to the power of one sixth. This is for the 
turbulent float this length. So now you may ask me, when I'm doing an analysis, should I really care about this entrance range? This is going to change the way that we analyze the question. Now, the answer is, it really depends. Okay, let's pick up the laminar and let's say that the maximum value is 2000, right? So if I insert here 2000, and you're going to see a Lee will be equal to um, 2000 times 0 0.06 is 112, 120 D, right? A Lee becomes 120 times the D. So if my diameter is, I don't know, one centimeter, then it's going to be 1.2 meters, right? So that's fairly long distance. So you really need to be careful, okay? My recommendations is always to check the length of the entrance region and check the length of the pipe that's given to you to see how much impact it's going to have, okay? One other thing that is worth noting here is that the turbulent flow will get a lower LE value. So entrance region is typically much shorter in turbulent flows as opposed to laminars, okay? Something to note. Next thing I want to talk about is how does the pressure change in my flow in the direction of the flow? I said that I have a pipe like this, right? And the flow is in this direction. If I plot the distance from the start versus the pressure, okay, so this is the pressure and this is the x and I define x by from here basically, okay, this is the x and this is the pressure, okay. So let's look at the, so I'm going to have an entrance length and let's call this LE, right, so I'm going to highlight this over here as this is the LE length, okay. So what I want to draw here is pressure function of the distance that I travel in. If I am in the fully developed region, the pressure gradient is going to be linear like this. Okay, it will come all the way to here. The reason for this is my pressure forces are balanced by viscous forces in this regime. Okay. All right, so before that though, and let's do a, like a dot line to continue this line. And in reality, what will happen is I'm not going to get this dashed line. There needs to be more pressure that I, apply, I supply to the flow because there will be more resistance in the entrance region. And in reality, what will happen is it's going to go like this, okay? So you can see this is more like a parabola. And I get over here, this is called entrance pressure drop is this height, okay? The reason for this is in this regime, the pressure forces are balanced by two things, not one. In the fluid develop, it's the viscous forces, and over here I still have the viscous forces, you know I have an inviscid core and a viscous, but also I have inertial forces as well. And what I mean by inertial forces is acceleration forces, so because the flow is in some regions it's accelerating, right? In some regions it's deaccelerating, so that accounts for this extra behavior. So now this is a very important thing. Let's say that I am interested in del P del X. P is how does pressure change in the X is the flow direction. Now, if I have a fluid developed regime, this will be not zero. I sometimes hear this students say it's zero. It's not zero. It is a constant, okay? So it is a negative number. As you can see, when I increase my distance, my pressure gets lower, right? If you look from here to here, the pressure value here is lower than here. So this is going to be a negative value, but still, it's going to be a constant value. However, if I'm analyzing this region, what you do notice is it's not even a linear line. So my del P del X will not be a constant. Now it's going to be a function of the x, okay? So that will make my life much more complicated over here. So if I write over here, my del p del x will not be a constant, okay? It will not be a constant. And let's write this is for the entrance region. This is for the fully developed flow. 